Hey there, I'm Jill Griffin, and this is the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm a former media and marketing executive turned career strategist and strengths coach. I spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups. And today, I show others how to do the same. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies to leverage your strengths, increase your confidence and visibility, and reset your career with actionable steps towards a finer future. Ready? Let's do it. Hey there, welcome back. I wanted to start again by thanking all of you and everyone who has reached out to me and is continuing to reach out to me because of the article I wrote in the Huffington Post. I had a friend over the weekend from high school reach out to me and tell me that I was a trending topic on Twitter. So I'm getting emails, I'm getting hit up through various social media platforms, and I never thought I would be a trending topic on Twitter. (laughs) But what I keep hearing is that I have clearly hit a nerve around workplace, how we work, inclusion, invisible or not apparent disabilities. And clearly many of us are overworking because we think we have to. And that really brings me to the topic that I want to talk about this week is that overworking and the mindset of overworking. Pew Research Centers recently did a study in which they found that 50% of employed people check their work email on weekends and about 34% of them check their email while they're on vacation. Harvard Medical School study found that 23% of workers experience insomnia and that many people are suffering from a lack of rest. Sleep deprivation is causing you is costing US companies more than $60 billion a year in lost productivity. So I want to ask you, what is it that you overdo and why do you do it? And if you're overworking, why? If your job is a classic Monday through Friday and you've agreed to the general, you know, 40-ish hours a week, then why are you working nights and weekends? If you are a salaried employee and you're continuing to clock 50, 60 hours a week or more, why are you doing it? If you're a remote worker or if you're still working from home due to the COVID pandemic, I'm hearing that so many people have eliminated their commute, but they've now just donated that commuting time to work. And going back to the Pew Research information, if you're checking your email on vacation, whether you get one week or four weeks, you are leaving your salary on the table. Why? And so many people are telling me that even if they're not working physically nights and weekends, they're mentally working a weekend because they may be with their friends, but now they're out talking about work and the work stress, or they may be there with their family, but they're thinking about work. So before you think and start responding with, well, there's just so much I need to do, or this is the expectation of the level of work that's expected of us or I have to do this work because it needs to be at a certain quality of excellence and no one else knows how to do it, I want you to know that I hear you and I get that. And there are many layers and nuances to these thoughts and our behavior around working in different environments. So it is not a one size fits all solution. So if you are overworking, I suggest that you talk to a mentor, a boss, a coach, an ally, someone that you can trust and work this through. Because again, it's not a one size fits all solution. So the suggestions that I have here are going to be prompts for you and thoughts for you to be thinking through, but you have to figure out the one that's right for you in your situation. So let me know if you find yourself in any of these examples. What I have seen consistently is that there's probably, there's about three main reasons as to why people overwork is that first is that they feel that there are expectations on them, even if they've never been said. The second might be is because they blame it on how they're wired or their personality. And they'll say things like, well, you know, I'm just an achiever. I get things done. It's part of my brand. Or it may come from like, it's just easier if I get it done myself and this hard work, I have a, I have a great work ethic. And this is that very uh, Protestant work ethic that is more and more outdated. And we're going to dig into that in a little bit. And the third reason 
that I find is driven by worry and fear. You feel a lot of pressure and anxiety, and you think that if you push through the worry and fear, that it'll pass, or it may lessen with the completion of the task. But I assure you that that feeling is going to come back with the next project if you don't really rethink how you're going about work. So I want to ask you, what are you really saying no to when you are saying yes to this overwork? Because when you continue to say yes to something that you have not agreed to, you are saying no to something else. You are overworking because you think you will feel a certain way by that overworking. Meaning, if you're overworking due to fear and worry, you feel that by overworking, you will feel less fear and worry. Or you're overworking because you want to get noticed or be ahead. Or it may be because you're trying to avoid something. Maybe there's something in your personal life that you don't want to address. Or you believe that working hard and making sure that you are not lazy has some moral value. If you are waiting for your boss, your company to reset the deck, it's not going to happen. You have to create that balance. Don't wait for your company to implement that shiny new employee wellness program because they might, but you still have to take charge. Don't be a victim. Don't blame the man. A reset on overworking requires you. You have to make the change. Your health and well-being depend on it. And if it's not today, it's going to catch up with you at some point if you don't find the balance. So often we think that we will feel better about ourselves because effort is the key and failure will be easier if you knew you tried your hardest. But you're really lying to yourself. And this mindset is so harsh and it's damaging to your career well-being. And it, it's this like constantly fed Silicon Valley and tech culture of driving to the finish line, sleep when you're dead. There's a philosopher, Alan Watts, and he says, and I'm paraphrasing here, that we find ourselves sitting at a desk or a dining room table with clenched jaw lines, furrowed brows, shallow breathing in order to will or to control our feelings. And we think this will drive us to put in the extra effort. But these bodily actions don't get us to get it done or to up-level our effort. They simply leave us exhausted and feeling angry and achy. Maybe feeling like, oh, we had a hard day. We gave a hard day. And that's that Protestant work ethic. If it's hurting, it must be working. And this outdated logic of this ethic is, is really what I want us to start peeling back the layers on and beginning to address. Working hard on the right things is awesome. Working hard and overworking because of fear or personality that you, it's just in you or that there's an unspoken um, expectation is what's going to slowly kill you, crush your creativity, and eventually harm your health. Working because we fear or worry that you or that you feel that you're you're going to be needed or values, it's not worth it. In the long run, that is the mind shift that I'm suggesting you make. It does mean that we put an effort, sure, but how would you define effort? How would your company culture define effort? And what does that mean to you? When we aren't clear in our career identity, we fall back into taking actions that I'll call the productive or the busy Olympics. We hustle, we grind. And the work that we are doing very often, if we're working in roles that are not tactable and tangible, doesn't recreate a result every day. Because it can be a really hard mentality if we're trying to be productive and do good work, but there's not necessarily an output. What I mean by that is if you work in sales, the value you are creating is understanding your client's business challenges and finding a solution for them. Well, that may take time. So you're building a relationship, you're understanding their business, but there's no tangible output. There is no sale. That's what I'm talking about. We have to find the ways to remind ourselves that we are creating value, even if we're not busy being productive, right? There's a difference there. 
So another example would be if you're a creative director and you're researching or you're thinking about a project or moving a project forward, there may be not anything to see yet. If you're in the law profession or a financial field, same thing. There may be tangible outputs on certain days, but other days it's about research, thinking, collaborating, figuring out the solution, and then having an output to your work. Psychology Today, um, Bar- Dr. Barbara Klinger says that the difference between a workaholic and a hard worker include being able to be emotionally present for family, friends, and coworkers, and being able to take a break after a hard working period or after meeting a goal. Workaholics can't do this because they, they feel constant internal chaos. Workaholics are often not managing their thoughts and they feel that they need to be in control and to, they believe they need to complete the task in a certain way, not realizing that their thoughts are creating their feelings and their actions. They're coming at everything from this level of like hustle and grind. And that's what the workaholic is doing. So a couple of things to think about on how to change behavior. So first I want you to think about mindset. You need to know a big enough why to change any behavior. You need to know why you wanna change the behavior. I'm less interested in why you do something, take that to therapy. I'm more interested in why you wanna change the behavior. What is changing the behavior gonna get you? And if your work is light for a particular week, don't judge yourself or your work. What if it's okay as is? What if it actually could be easy? And if you find a week that it is overloaded and heavy, ask yourself, are you doing what you need to do for the project or are you avoiding something? Are you busy working because you don't want to feel worry and fear around the project? Do you find yourself overworking because you think it will make you feel better in the end? And let me remind you that when you take an action, in this case, overworking, you will never fix the thought problem of, I have to make sure this is perfect. Or if you're avoiding something, like in your personal life, and you don't want to think about a relationship that you find challenging, is that connected to your overworking? Are you throwing yourself into another action to deal with how you're thinking about a particular relationship or problem? Awareness precedes change. And becoming aware of what you're doing and the actions you are taking and why will really help you rethink it. The next thing I would suggest you do is process what you are feeling. When you are in a safe place, consider allowing the feelings of worry and fear to swell up. You could be curious about it, what's happening in your body and behind the scenes. It's just neurochemicals floating through your body feels really intense sometimes or really stressful, or maybe it feels like a little bit of heartache, but at the end of the day, those will start to dissipate if you give it attention. And you're basically telling your nervous system that it's okay to feel those things because they're going to dissipate over time. And then we're less afraid. Time management. I want you to rethink time management and ask yourself also a couple of questions. What does success look like? How would you redefine it? What are you making a title mean? What does a dollar amount in your salary or in your bank account mean to you? And how true is it? I mean, I know it's true for you, but would everyone agree? And how does that thought serve you? Is it serving you? Are you creating and getting the results you want? Create a list of results you want instead of the hours that you've worked. And then rethink your thoughts that way. Block off time on your calendar just because it's space to breathe, to think, to take a walk. Next, I'd suggest that you practice constraint. You know, it's funny. I give myself the flexibility to create content like this podcast and the other work that I do. And when I say like, I'm going to do it on Tuesday, I can easily go overboard. If I say I'm going to write a slide presentation, also known as the deck, then guess what happens if I give myself too much time? I will spend the entire day doing it because I have the extra time. But if I say to myself, I'm going to spend two hours and I'm going to do it, guess what? That's the time I spend and it gets done. When I hear people say, like, I work best under pressure. No, what you really work best under is a 
time constraint because at a certain point it's due and you either need to show up and ship or there's a ramification for not doing the work. You could be, you could put that time constraint on yourself right now and get it done and still not overwork. As an entrepreneur, I have had to clearly put up boundaries for myself and work. You know, I've been on my own now for five years and times it can feel weird. Like I should be doing something. We can, I can rework my week and keep looking at what it is that, that is the most value that I'm creating for my clients, the most value that I'm putting out in my world. But I'll tell you, there's times where my mindset will still go into like, if I'm spending a Wednesday afternoon for two hours reading a business book, it feels weird. Like I should be doing something. Like I should be at my desk producing something versus reading, absorbing, creating, thinking, and then I will be able to produce at a different level. I'm producing space and rest so I can ultimately produce master coaching, creative solutions, career strategies for my clients. I too have to work on my career well-being and I can't just go about it without managing my mind. The next super tactical, don't multitask. Seriously, turn off distractions. The phone is on do not disturb. The email is closed. Slack or Teams, closed. Yeah, closed. Keep it closed. Focus. And then we want to think about constructive rest. When we work, we work. And when we relax, we relax. And building time in your day for a 30-minute meditation or going on a walk or getting some exercises, eating lunch not at your workstation, finding ways to decompress, all of these things will make you more productive because in space, and dare I say, in maybe some boredom, you will find creativity, solutions, and career well-being. I was always finding myself taking some time on the weekend to sit at the beach or the park and then wondering why later I would be so creative and so many ideas and wondering and wondering. It was because I was giving my brain and myself time to rest. Entrepreneur Dan um, Pallada, I believe that's how you say his name. And if not, sorry, Dan says, worry isn't work. Being stressed out isn't work. Anxiety isn't work. Entertaining a sense of impending doom isn't work. Incessant verbal punishment isn't work. Indulging the great unknown fear in your own mind isn't work. Hating yourself isn't work. And this is what so many of us are doing for ourselves and to ourselves when we are overworking. Dan goes on to say in reference to the Protestant work ethic that we stopped burning witches at the stake over 400 years ago, and maybe it's time we stop doing this to ourselves. Okay, friends, before I go, let me know what you think about overworking. I have my contact information in the show notes, and I would love to hear from you. Before I go, I want to know... Who is helping you with your career strategy? I'd be honored to help you. I'm going to put the details in the show notes of where you can reach out and find more information about my one-on-one or my group programs. All right, my friends, thanks for joining me this week. Have a beautiful week and I will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this podcast and you want more career and mindset tips, get on my email list by going to jillgriffincoaching.com. I'll also put that link in the show notes. But before you go, please rate and review this podcast as it helps me get the word out to people everywhere so they can also thrive in the workplace. I'll see you next time.